taxation is aggravated and repeated first-degree armed robbery. And in Hungary, they have an entire network of museums dedicated to the history of taxation in the country. Entrance and videotaping is free of charge because you've already paid for it, even if you're in the country for a few days like I was last time. So let's explore! Hello everyone and welcome to the Freedom Alternative. Alright, so in 2017 for the Hungary-Georgia-Armenia tour I promised a quick visit to the Budapest Tax Museum but the advertised schedule of the museum did not fit with the one displayed on the site, which shouldn't surprise anyone, it is after all an institution meant to glorify the tax authority bureaucracy after all. Since then, I tried to get to this elusive museum every time I happened to be in Budapest and I kept on missing it. And even this time, I narrowly got to it just before they closed because, once again, they changed the schedule and it no longer fits what you find on most websites. But anyway, I wanted to get here because it's one of the hidden gems of Budapest. Even most locals don't know this museum exists and it's probably because they're busy working to pay the taxes to keep it open. <laughs> Anyway, so the Museum of Hungarian Customs and Tax History in Budapest, as it's officially called, is institutionally over 80 years old, but its current location dates back to 1995, when the state moved it into this lovely homogeneous Art Nouveau mansion on Munkacs Mihai Street in the elegant mansion district Terezváros, deep into the old city of Pest, because the Buda portion is older than anything on this street, really. The building took two years to be built, between 1910 and 1912, and was commissioned by the railways engineer and industrialist baron Mikshaw Schiffer to serve as the family mansion. Those interested in architecture have a lot to admire in this building, but I wouldn't be able to give you any details because I'm illiterate on the topic and I treat architecture like I treat sculpture. It either makes me puke or it's okay. This building is definitely okay. <laughs> The history of the building is pretty interesting in and of itself because it was not meant to celebrate the state and least of all the violence of the state used to steal and then call it taxation. Quite the contrary, the building was meant to house and serve as resting place for one of the top tier industrialists that Hungary ever had, a man to whom Hungary still owes to this day many of its railways but also the open air bath uh, Palatinus on the Margaret Island, which for obvious reasons I can't show it to you. Mikshaw Schiffer was a baron in the classical sense. He used his wealth to patronize fine arts, sponsor other beautiful constructions, and towards the end of his life, in support of classical liberalism and against the disease of socialism which was approaching Hungary ferociously. Mr. Schiffer died in April 1944. A few months later, one of his buildings was turned into a yellow star house where Jews were forcibly confined and from where, in the autumn, the men were deported to labor camps. One year later, the other socialists were taking over the country and by the end of 1945, his surviving wife and daughters permanently emigrated from Hungary and never came back. Descendants of the Schiffers have visited this place only two months ago, in December 2018. When I asked whether the house will be given back to the family, as it should be, the guide changed the subject. Anyway, so towards the end of World War II, the house suffered a bomb attack and then was stolen by the now communist state and in 1958, after some renovations, uh, became the headquarters of Hungarofugt, a state company that, as the name suggests, 
dealt with commercializing fruits. Hungaro Frucht still exists today and as late as 2012 it still had its official headquarters in this building, even though de facto the building belongs to a tax authority and has been a museum since 1995 and since 1996 a full member of an institution that I had no idea it existed, the International Association of Customs and Taxation Museums. Mind you, this is not the only exhibition of the museum as an institution, there is another one that is more impressive in Budapest that can only be viewed upon previous registration. So guess what I'll be doing next time I'm in Budapest? But also there is a whole network of such museums all over the country. There are also tax museums in Papo, Sopron, Seged, Kecskemét, Miskolc and Beregsoron. There are also free of charge museums to visit because, once again, you already paid for them. Now the exhibition itself is, quite frankly, thin and hardly spectacular and if you visit it in a sunny day, like I did, taking video footage becomes a nightmare because the exhibition rooms are arranged in such a way that it's almost impossible to avoid having your pictures ruined by the sunlight even if you're basically alone in the room. Although the documented history of taxation on these lands starts somewhere in the 13th century, this particular museum starts with the 18th century. The guide was unable to tell me whether there are any older artifacts at the other, more elusive exhibition. Perhaps the most spectacular part of the exhibition is the uniforms. In the past, the state thieves wore a uniform to differentiate themselves from the pettier and more benign thieves. For at least two centuries, even the state elites understood that there is a difference between regular people, including petty thieves, and the customs and finance guard. Maybe that habit should be brought back, as today many state thieves walk around in clothes resembling regular people. <laughs> Now, jokes aside, it is in a way fascinating to take a glimpse into the inner workings of the tax authority over a longer span of history, showing consistently how behind with the times government has always been. For instance, the finance guard started using the typewriter semi-regularly from 1927 and it only got to use it all the time another decade later. By comparison, every semi-decent private operation in Hungary and Europe in general had adopted the typewriter as the standard by 1910 and many even before that. Did I mention that the uniforms are the best part of this museum? The third room drives the point about uniforms home pretty nicely as in this room there are artifacts covering the period between the end of World War II and present day. Now, if uh, the light had been better, you would have been able to notice the Pendu Gosheg armbands. Pendu Gosheg, the name of the in Hungarian for the fi finance guard, a name emerged in early communism and which was maintained until January 2011, when all the tax related institutions were merged into the Nemzeti Ado és Vamhivatal or the National Tax and Customs Board or Administration, which I guess sounds less intimidating than the Finance Guard, though, make no mistake, it is still the same theft. In the final analysis, if you want to extract something optimistic out of a quick visit to this museum, it should be noted that the exhibition shows that it has, essentially, always been the case for the state to be slow and lagging way behind technologically and, to a certain extent, politically too. This means there is a continuous historical pattern that there are always opportunities for normal people to avoid being stolen from by the never-ending greed of the collectivist state elites and the bootlicking bureaucrats that enable this. Strictly on the museum's organizing, the administrators should consider adding more emphasis on the communist period because the official propaganda at the time said that Hungary was a tax-free society, which of course it wasn't. 
Another reason why further emphasis on the communist era would be in order is because the museum is geographically very close to the famous House of Terror, so it would be a good addition in the knowledge delivered to the visitor who would first learn about the physical and mental horrors of various forms of socialism and then could learn about the fiscal dimensions of the communist experience. Ultimately, upon visiting this museum, I now understand why it is a hidden gem. It's because it's hardly ever promoted and very poorly integrated with the rest of the museums in Budapest, especially in terms of its opening hours, which are inconsistent and tourist unfriendly. The museum closes down at 2.30 pm on Fridays and stays closed until 8 am on Mondays. Most tourists these days arrive in Budapest around noon on Fridays and leave Monday morning. Also, to increase the level of attractiveness, it would help if they'd require the support of the neighboring Croatian embassy in keeping more cats around, and preferably friendlier ones. Here in Romania, for instance, the tax authority has a few cats around almost all of its branches, and since they're fed by the taxpayers' money, they're fat, and by that I mean fluffy and friendly. <laughs> anyway, I mostly made this video because I found it hilarious that such thing as a tax museum exists and it has a whole network of museums around it. And now that I know that there is an international association of customs and tax museums, I'll be sure to check out their members in other countries. I saw on their website that they have one in Hamburg, Germany. Hopefully I will catch it in the opening hours when I'll be in Germany later on this year. According to the website, the one in Germany is huge, and I didn't expect otherwise. The German obsession with rules and taxes means that a tax museum would have quite a lot to show. All right, that's it for now. I promise I'll get back with more serious content from the queue. Since this operation is funded by voluntary contribution and not by institutionalized theft, I would invite you to consider a donation should you derive any value from the work being done here. If you don't derive any value, that's fine. You should still consider subscribing to our social media and check out freedomalternative.com. And with all that being said, thank you all for watching and I will see you all soon on the Freedom Alternative.